Hey, Dad, are you listening to the radio? The worst, most exploitative parents that I talk about. They clickbaited her daughter, their daughter getting cancer. Yep. Uh, too far. <laughs> Not all that glitters is always gold. Have you ever looked at a perfect looking avocado? It just looks perfect and ripe on the outside, and then you cut into it and it's completely bruised and rotted on the inside. Enter family channels. We're giving Carl away to somebody else. The LeBrant family is probably the most perfect looking family channel on YouTube. The parents are beautiful, rich, they live in Southern California and do fun things as a family together. And they film all these fun, perfect looking things they do for their millions and millions of fans. But all that glitters is not gold. And there's a darker side to these YouTube parents and all the twisted lies they've told their fans. The worst, most exploitative parents that I talk about. They clickbaited her daughter, their daughter getting cancer. Yep. So who are the parents behind the LeBrant family and what internet crimes have they committed? Before we talk more about the dangers of family channels and the controversies of the LeBrant family, this video is sponsored by Ritual. I've been getting into working out more and more lately when I can because lifestyle balance is super hard for me and I've been loving Ritual's essential protein as part of my workout and daily routine. I love how easy it is to incorporate Ritual into my lifestyle, so I'm really excited to share their new product with you. Ritual recently launched their essential protein daily shakes to support maintenance of lean muscle mass and to promote healthy active aging for everyone, not just athletes. Essential Protein 18 Plus contains nine essential amino acids, providing a complete amino acid profile, helping to build lean muscle mass, satisfy appetite, and support bone health. Ritual's Essential Protein Shake contains 20 grams of vegan pea protein, contains choline, that's how you say it, right? Like all Ritual products, Essential Protein is soy-free, gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and formulated with non-GMO ingredients. There's also no added sugar or sugar alcohols. The supply chain for Essential Protein is also fully traceable, which I really appreciate. The pea protein is derived from peas grown in the USA, and the Essential Protein is available in daily formulas for those 18+, plus, 50+, plus, and for pregnancy and postpartum. Get 20% off your first month with Ritual by going to www.ritual.com slash capital C-U-R-E-L 20 aka cruel 20 and using code capital cruel 20 at checkout and help fuel your body right. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring this video. I know last month I also featured their vitamins. I've been really enjoying Ritual as a company and I know I've received a lot of messages from people who have enjoyed using their products as well. And now let's get back into the video and talk about the LeBrant family. Before we get into this video, I want to pay tribute to Everly LeBrant's dad, who at the time of filming this video passed away a few days ago. My heart goes out to Everly and Tommy Smith's close family, and I'm so sorry that this happened. Out of respect for Tommy, I try not to include him and his story in this video as much as possible, and please, in the comments, be respectful of Everly's biological dad. The LeBrant family social medias are run by parents Cole LeBrant and Savannah LeBrant, whose maiden name is Savannah Sudas. So, how did Cole and Savannah start the LeBrant family channel? Cole LeBrant was born on August 21st, 1996, which means he's currently only 26 years old. Cole was raised in Troy, Alabama, and back in 2013, Cole's life took an unexpected turn after a random post he made with his friends on Vine. And after one week, they had a hundred thousand followers, and they called their comedy trio Dem White Boys. Yeah! 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 
Before Dem White Boys had any time to get used to their newfound fame, they found themselves on a plane to Hollywood to do meet and greets. And while Cole took well to this new stardom, his friends weren't having as much fun. And eventually, Cole's friends grew tired of being in the spotlight and having to take so much time to sit down and come up with video concepts. So Cole's friends allowed him to rebrand their social media account. Savannah Rose Sudas was born on March 2nd, 1993, and was raised in Orange County, California. Unfortunately, she didn't grow up in a happy home like Cole. When Savannah was only a toddler, her parents divorced due to infidelity, and Savannah grew up without her dad present. Looking back on her childhood, it was clear to Savannah how much that affected her, especially as a teenage girl, she said. I think it's so important to have your dad in your life if you can. I think that definitely made me kind of go down a darker path. Thankfully, Savannah always had her sister Chantel by her side, and the hardships only made them grow closer. When Savannah was 19, she unexpectedly became pregnant. Her baby Everly was born on December 12, 2012, but Savannah did not want to go through raising Everly alone, and she found herself in a really dark place. Everything that had happened with Tommy left her with terribly low self-esteem, and she struggled with loving herself and believing in herself. Everly is my kid. I had her when I was 19. Not with the dad. Never was married to the dad. He was my boyfriend at the time. I was left feeling ugly and worse than worthless, like no one else would ever want to be with me because I had a kid. This was one of the lowest times in Savannah's life, and she felt completely stuck. But Everly grew into this sweet, adorable young girl, and Savannah eventually found an outlet that initially allowed her to escape and bond with her daughter, and that was through posting on Musical.ly. And Savannah ended up gaining a large fan base through doing videos with Everly. Savannah and her daughter Emily are big on Musical.ly with like 4 million followers and then I was big on mine and now we're both kind of like big on Instagram and other social medias so so many people naturally kind of assume that we met through social media because of social media um, and that social media because we're both social media people is kind of what brought us together but that, that wasn't it at all. But the camera only really showed the good, and Savannah was still struggling behind closed doors. Cole and Savannah knew of each other on Musical.ly, but only had really small interaction. Until one day when Cole was visiting California and ended up seeing Savannah at a mall. I decided, kind of like a last minute thing, to spend a month in, the month of June in California. There's this place called The Grove. And it's like an outside mall in LA. So we're at the outdoor mall that Saturday. Continue. I look over and I see Cole. The two Musical.ly stars exchanged numbers but didn't really think anything would ever come of it. Savannah was 23 years old and a single mom, whereas Cole was a teenager. Yeah. Cole was only 19 when they met. But despite their differences, they decided to spend time together while Cole was in California. They figured they could probably help each other gain a bigger following while on social media. And eventually, they began to develop feelings for one another. So yeah, I, pretty much towards the end of that trip, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And I said yes. And she said yes. And eventually, Savannah and Cole moved in together, and things only continued to get better for them as they joined forces on social media, audiences seemingly loving this wholesome, happy content that they were producing. I met a girlfriend. Hi! Hey! Hi. We're doing topography. By late January of 2017, Cole proposed to Savannah in a video uploaded to their channel. The couple was married six months later in a video titled Our Wedding Video, Vows to Four-Year-Old Daughter. Cole, Richard LeGrant, from the first time that I met you at the Grove, I didn't believe that someone as godly and amazing as you. They soon changed their YouTube channel name to The LeBrant Fam, where they would post videos of their daily lives. And as their following grew more prominent, they started to earn big 
big money on YouTube. Their YouTube channel currently has over 13 million subscribers. Savannah has 29 million fans on TikTok and Cole is not far behind. And along with their followers on Instagram, the family as a whole has brought in a lot of money through social media. According to Nailbuzz, their net worth is around 12 million and fans loved getting to know the family that the LeBrant parents portrayed themselves to be online. The audience especially loved watching Everly and Cole's relationship develop. Cole was only 19 and all of a sudden married with a child, which is a lot to take on. And I'm sure Cole felt a lot of pressure to provide for this new family of his. I know that all parents feel incredibly nervous about how they're going to provide for their children. And with a social media following that's exponentially growing, I can sympathize that maybe to Cole and Savannah, it seems like an easy way to make money and provide for this new family while still getting to be there with their kids. On the outside looking in, making money as a family channel seems like the perfect scenario. You get to stay home, you don't have to go to work, you don't have to leave your children, and you also get to do fun things with them as long as you record them and put them on the internet. We all record videos of our family for our own memory, so what's the difference? Well, a lot of things change when you become a family channel. <laughs> Obviously, the biggest factor is that millions of people are watching your content and the videos that you post, including creepers, who are able to see the most intimate moments with you and your children and get a sneak peek into your children's lives. You have all been waiting. Another thing is family vlogging can become dangerous when instead of just uploading snippets of your life, you start to tailor your life around what makes good content. Because let's be real, nobody's day-to-day -day life is really that interesting. And so then all of a sudden, your entire family's life becomes centered around what's gonna make good YouTube content. For example, some of the most popular videos on the LeBrant family channel is taking their daughter to a water park multiple times in multiple videos where their daughter is wearing a bikini and they're showing her going down the slide. You know, you know. <laughs> or their daughter at her dance competitions, once again in a dance outfit doing dance moves, you know? Of course, watching an adorable family is cute and sweet and wholesome, but when you look at the most popular videos of the LeBrant family, things start to become a little bit darker and you start to wonder who is watching these videos that is making it so popular? Because the most popular videos of the LeBrant family has to do with the daughter Everly either dancing, doing gymnastics, swimming, or going to a water park. And I wonder how Everly, when she gets older, is gonna feel when she finds out some of those intimate moments when she was maybe put in compromising positions were filmed and uploaded to YouTube and viewed tens of millions of times. The worst, most exploitative parents that I talk about. We talked, one of the biggest, you know, blast through the wall video we ever did was when we talked about Everly LeBrant's analytics. 
where we talked about over 70% of the 4 million men that, uh, over 70% of the 4 million people that follow on Instagram are men, adult males. But besides concerning videos posted by the LeBrant family, the LeBrants, or rather the LeBrant parents, have also gotten into some controversy. It seems like Savannah and Cole haven't just exaggerated seemingly normal parts of their life, but have also completely fabricated pretty serious events seemingly for views and clickbait. Their channel has nearly 6.7 million subscribers. They're all packed up. But their most recent post brought a different kind of attention that the Ladero Ranch couple is likely used to. On August 23rd of 2018, the couple exploited a wildfire in California and pretended that they were forced to evacuate their home due to the wildfire. Yeah. There's a fire, so... I'm just doing this just in case if we do have to evacuate or our home gets burned down. In a video titled, We Left Our House Because of Fires in California, Cole alleged that his wife had texted him because there was a huge fire near their house and that they might have to evacuate. A huge fire right by our house and that uh, we might need to evacuate. Hey guys, so we got Eggly with us now. We picked her up from her grandma. So, hey, you know that we're leaving the fire, right? Go far, far away. We're going away from the fire so you don't have to be scared anymore. The vlog then cuts to footage from local news about the Holy Fire, which burned more than 22,000 acres in Southern California and destroyed 18 homes. Cole in the vlog shows a view of smoke from his roof. He tells his viewers that the fire is only four miles away and that they just got an evacuation thing. And we just got an evacuation thing. I have this backpack on that has like a laptop, a camera. Essential. Essentials in it because we might not be able to come home tonight. Hopefully we never have to upload this, but if we do, then you guys kind of saw what happened. Keep you guys updated. So we're all packed up. Go to play station for Fortnite. So we got our necessities in these two tiny bags. Everything. Everything that we don't want to get burned down. After picking up their daughter Everly from her grandmother's house, the rest of the vlog showed the couple driving up to San Francisco, checking into a hotel and sightseeing. But after the video was posted, neighbors quickly scrutinized the couple and exposed the LeBrands, saying that authorities never evacuated the area. Plenty of people in both Orange and Riverside counties were told to get out of their homes when that holy fire came a little too close. The problem with this story is that there was a couple who documented their own distress on YouTube, but Ladera Ranch never under mandatory evacuation order. And according to the National Wildfire Coordinating Group website, the area that the LeBrands live in was not one of the communities listed as an evacuated area for the Holy Fire. And the couple's neighbors told Fox 11 that they were never evacuated and found the video very upsetting. There was no evacuation notice to Ladera Ranch. Marissa Seamus lives near the LeBrands. She says plenty of the neighbors are not amused by the social media influencers. I just think it's really sad that they would exploit a situation that's as serious as a fire that so many people were evacuated um, from just so that they could get more likes or more hits on their channel. I have friends who were evacuated in a very scary situation. So, you know, kind of making light of that, I don't think was proper. The video amassed almost 8.5 million views in five days. And it seems like somewhere along their journey posting as the LeBrant family, Savannah and Cole's moral lines about what's appropriate to post began to blur. Because no one should think it's okay to fake having to be evacuated from your home because a wildfire is going to blow through your neighborhood. It's just not okay to exploit a natural disaster for views and and money. But instead of addressing the situation, the LeBrant family brushed it off and continued to document their pregnancy journey. And on December 28th of 2018, Savannah gave birth to Posey Rain LeBrant, which was the couple's first child together. Cole and Savannah often posted vlogs of them pranking one another and pranking their daughter Everly, which 
is definitely a weird concept to me, especially when children become the butt of a joke in a pranking video that's uploaded to YouTube and seen millions and millions of times, which so many family channels do, including the LeBrant family. I really, I really love pranking people and she loves being pranked, so we're not like super mean parents and like she's gonna love this. But there is one incident especially where the LeBrant family took things way too far. In a now deleted video titled, We Have to Give Our Puppy Away saying goodbye forever frowny face emoji uploaded on april 1st of 2019 cole and savannah took things way too far and got quite a bit of backlash from their fans cole and sav pranked their four-year-old everly into thinking she'd have to give away their beloved family dog carl we need to reflect on why would grown-ups put you in that situation and how can such a situation disrupt important factors of child development such as trust attachment predictability, consistency, security, safety. In this video, Cole and Savannah thought it was a good idea to prank their child, their young child, Everly, into thinking that they had to give away their family pet dog, whose name was Carl. We feel like we can't take good enough care of him, joked Savannah in the video. We're giving Carl away something else. Because we feel like we can't take good enough care of and you can see in the video that Everly is just devastated that they have to give away their family pet. You okay? Come here. Yeah. What's the matter? And Savannah and Cole continue filming Everly as she clearly gets more and more upset. We're gonna let her give, give him away. But then Sav finally whispers to her the whole thing is a joke. And by the time they told Everly that the whole thing was just a joke, she was too upset to even speak. Keep going. Or to even come. <laughs> I remember times as a child when I've gotten that upset by a life situation and I could not imagine if that was filmed and uploaded on YouTube. So after the video was posted and the video started to gather more and more views, fans were commenting that the couple clearly went too far and were traumatizing Everly for no reason. This time, some people say the parents took this one too far and they seem to know it. Uh, too far? <laughs> Savannah and Cole realized that this time the backlash was way too much to not address and they posted an apology video in a vlog. That was just a bad judgment call yeah. in the moment and I'm 22, she's 20, just turned 26, we're young parents and we put all of our lives out on social media for the most part. I mean, I say all of our lives, but obviously we're doing 15 minute videos three days a week so you guys have seen bits and pieces and we're gonna make mistakes, so we do apologize. But also, once again, even though the outcome of this video was sad and upsetting, even just the premise of these types of videos are odd and off-putting. For the sake of views, family channels decide it's a good idea to put their own child as a target of a mean-spirited prank in which they film their child getting clearly very upset or agitated and then post it online for views. And family channels do things like this all the time. And even though the LeBrant family may try and portray this picture-perfect family, they're really no different. They clearly use their children for content and post embarrassing and vulnerable moments for their children that will stay on the internet forever. And Everly is an adorable child that the internet grew a strong love for, so many became worried that Everly's parents were using her for fame. You probably thought one of the parents might have faked cancer. No, even worse, Cole and Savannah pretended that one of their children had cancer. She got diagnosed with cancer, documentary. Not saying who it is, and they initially had a photo of their family as the title. She got diagnosed with cancer and it's clickbait? You kidding me? <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. 
Uh, Ian's fine. Yeah, Ian's fine. They, they totally lied about this? Trouble continued to follow Cole and Savannah when they pretended that their toddler had cancer. In August of 2021, the LeBrands posted a preview for an upcoming video with an extremely alarming title. She got diagnosed with cancer, documentary. And the thumbnail for the video was a photograph with a couple hand in hand with their three children. Everly, who was eight, Posey, two years old, and their son, Zeeland, who was one at the time. The 43 minute video went live on August 29th and began with Cole telling the story of how he met his wife and how they made their family. We're happy, completely normal, other than the fact that we share our lives on the internet for a living. We have normal good days and normal bad days. I've been extremely lucky. And then the mood shifts in the video, and him and Savannah talk about their two-year-old Posey and how she had to visit the emergency room three times in her first year of life. Posey has kind of given us a run with just like hospital, being host she's been hospitalized three times, right? Yeah. Like, like, in Posey, like, like first year of life, she had to go to the ER like Three times, but not even include the cruise. You guys, it wasn't even just like she was kind of like kind of sick, and we had to go. She was like projectile vomiting, had to like get an IV, like got X-rays. It's like normal sick. No, like she's she's always like scared us so bad. They talk about her getting IVs and X-rays and how it wasn't normal sick. And that's when the word cancer comes up. And Cole talks about how he convinced himself from anxiety that his two-year-old had cancer. I was truly just riddled with anxiety. I had convinced myself that our two-year-old daughter had, had cancer. And it sounds so blunt and so almost bad to say, but I, I was convinced. And I, I really, I, I wasn't eating. I couldn't sleep. Um, she had bruising on her legs. Like, most kids do, but um, as you Google things, you can just convince yourself of stuff. And that's my personality. Savannah talks about carrying the weight of her husband's worry and how she would tell herself, everything's fine, it's not going to happen to us, which is what I feel like all parents say. You don't think it's gonna happen to you. So I was like, nope, everything's fine. Like, there's no way that that's gonna happen. Like, everything's fine, it's not gonna happen to us, which is what I feel like all parents say. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't think it's gonna happen to you. Yeah, you don't think it's gonna happen. Then they talk about scans and blood tests and say that God was breaking their hearts for a reason so that they could do something and fight against childhood cancers. I think at the end of all this, we knew like exactly what God was doing and he was breaking our hearts for a reason. But the thing is, Posey is not ill at all. Posey, their daughter, does not have cancer. Despite the video title, despite the thumbnail, despite the entire opening of this video, it turns out that Cole had just decided through all his googling of pediatric cancer that people need to know about this. And don't get me wrong, spreading awareness about an important issue like pediatric cancer is super important and super valuable. But I would argue that's clearly not what Savannah and Cole were really doing in this video. If it was just about spreading awareness, they would have gone about it in a completely different way. Instead, they clickbaited that their child had cancer to garner views and tried to cover it up or make it seem like a good thing because they were spreading awareness about an important issue. The remainder of the video shows Cole visiting sick children, at least one of whom he gives an envelope that's apparently stuffed with $10,000 dollars in cash. But in my maybe harsh opinion here, they are not doing charity work in this video. They're just kind of exploiting sick children for their own views and to make themselves look like good people. The LeBrant family's net worth is at least 12 million. Giving away $10,000 in cash in a tax write-offable video, mind you, where they clickbaited their child having cancer and used the issue of childhood cancer cancer to garner views for their own channel doesn't really feel like charity work to me. 
Cole later posted an Instagram story where he apologized for the video. We woke up with a lot of concerned messages from you guys, rightfully so. I want to start off by apologizing for any misleading title or thumbnail. I promise you, that is not our heart. This is a video that we've been working so, so hard on for the past six months. Nothing for us, nothing for our gain. But this is something that our family is extremely passionate about. Something that rattled our family to the bones and broke our hearts. The video remained uploaded, but the couple changed the thumbnail, similar to the fire incident. There have been multiple articles suggesting that the couple might be exploiting their child Everly. Fans have also posted compilations online about the couple excluding Everly from the family, treating her poorly, and exploiting her. The worst, most exploitative parents that I talk about. We talked, one of the biggest, you know, blast through the wall video we ever did was when we talked about Everly LeBrant's analytics. We talked about over 70% of the 4 million men that, uh, over 70% of the 4 million people that follow on Instagram are men. Literally every single one of the most successful videos on the LeBrant family channel is featuring Everly and solely about Everly, usually doing some kind of physical movement. The video of the LeBrant family wedding, which has over 44 million views, is titled Vows to My Four-Year-Old Daughter, and many think that the family is trying to gain fame by putting Everly at the forefront because her face and name is at this point what garners views for the channel. Children are undeniably adorable, some more than others, of course, and children make for great content. Unfortunately, they have honest, adorable reactions to things, and them not understanding social media and the concept of being filmed and put online makes content with children in it more authentic and therefore more wholesome and real, which is something that's hard to find on the internet nowadays. But the level of focus that family channels place on their children is unmatched, and the LeBrant family, I would say, is most guilty of this because, well, I hate to say it, but Cole and Savannah are kind of boring people with fairly bland personalities. Let's be honest, most viewers don't tune in to watch Cole and Savannah's incredibly fascinating and intellectual takes. They watch LeBrant family videos for cute videos of their children and their family doing cute things together. Their children are the main stars of their content and at the center of everything they make. Don't get me wrong, there's adorable, touching moments that the LeBrant family have posted that have even made me tear up because I'm a big softy. And I'm not smart enough to figure out if all family channels should be banned and no children should be posted on the internet. And I don't think that will ever happen, unfortunately, realistically. But I definitely think, at the very least, the way that family channels like the LeBrant family post is just too extreme. Extremely invasive, and let's be honest, downright exploitative, of their children who can't even consent to being online in the first place. After the LeBrands had their third child, the LeBrands have recently talked about how Everly is going to be homeschooled. I feel like it started making me think about homeschool a little bit with Everly because... Let me stop there real quick, sir. Sorry for interrupting you there, Savannah. No. And do you know why I say no so adamantly like I am right now? Because you guys don't even have educations. I haven't ever done this because she's at school. If she's at school, then... um. 
she's a dancer. She dances well.、So. Which is, of course, generally speaking, fine. A lot of parents homeschool their children. If it wasn't for the main reason they've chosen to homeschool Everly, which is so that Everly can help around the house and so that they have an extra pair of hands. Having her here would be nice. Just with another baby coming too, like she just. It's nice having an extra pair of hands around the house, even if it's a nine-year-old. <laughs> Which is concerning for so many reasons. The first being, of course, the fact that they had some sort of subconscious slip on how they view their daughter to be, in some way, a pair of hands or expected to help and provide labor for the family. And secondly, because so much of Everly's life has been on camera and has been on camera her entire life, I'm sure in a lot of ways school was. The only escape for Everly. I feel like it's kind of rare that we have a full family. Like, yeah, and by everybody we have Everly is because she's usually at school. And if you know like, she's not at school, then、um, she's at dance. She dances a lot. So, what about going to see your dad? What about that part? Anybody? Anybody?、Um, Yeah, it's just nice to have everybody together. Though the parents do say that Everly does want to be homeschooled and is excited about being homeschooled. Yeah, and not to say I'm gonna homeschool her forever. I would actually like for her to go back to school eventually. I just, while she's little like this, I want to get some extra love on her. Your final thoughts about still being a parent? She's very excited because I'm homeschooling her, but she also is going to the school twice a week, so it's. Little up, you know? But to me, this whole thing feels like a complete violation of child labor laws. And social media stars can violate child labor laws, including children in content can generate higher revenue because once again, children are adorable and entertaining. When these families gain a significant following and attention and popularity, and especially when these families begin to transition to have a YouTube and social. Media career, their children are forced to devote their time to filming videos with their parents, and this can be kind of immoral and controversial, as these children are slowly deprived of a true childhood and of internet protection. The LeBrant family includes their children in almost all of their YouTube videos, Instagram posts, and TikTok videos, and each of Savannah and Cole's children have their own Instagram pages. Having such a prevalent social Media presence before the child can even read or write is problematic in a multitude of ways. For one, the child will most likely have no privacy throughout their childhood and adolescence, and isn't able to have a fun and active childhood that's not under the microscope of millions of viewers. Children who spend a significant amount of time generating wealth for their parents may not always be willing to do so. In a picture or video, they. May seem happy. However, this isn't necessarily an accurate indication of whether or not a child is being forced to perform tasks to help their parents earn money. Child labor laws are meant to help protect the child from being employed under the age of 14 or from working under any circumstances that endanger their health or well-being. Children of social media stars may be subject to exploitation or being overworked. Which are two things that violate child labor laws, and I think the Lebrant family is a huge example of that. And to show it, let's examine how much an average video or social media post of theirs features their children, in which their children have to perform in front of a camera to some extent, do some sort of labor or work, pose for a camera, learn a dance, etc. So I'm gonna analyze how much their children appear in the Lebrant family's Instagram photos, TikToks, YouTube thumbnails, and video itself to see how much labor these children are actually doing. Considering working on the family channel is a full-time job for Cole and Savannah, their currently four children all have their own social media profiles. Everly has five million followers on Instagram. Their second oldest daughter Posey shares. 
shares an Instagram account with their youngest daughter, Sunday, and has 1.5 million followers. Zealand, their only son at the moment, has 695 followers. Now, looking at Savannah and Cole's Instagram feed, I'm going to analyze the latest 20 posts of each of their accounts to determine how often in their own Instagram do their children appear. On Savannah's Instagram account, which has 7.1 million followers, out of the last 20 posts, the children are in approximately 16. And I didn't count slideshows where the children are on the second page just to make things easier and more fair. So that's an average of 80% of Instagram posts that Savannah posts where her children are in the photo. On Cole's Instagram account, which has 5 million followers, of the last 20 posts, the children are in approximately 14, so a slightly better 70% of all of Cole's posts feature his children. So moving on, let's take a look at Cole and Savannah's TikToks. Savannah has 29.3 million followers on TikTok, and in the past 20 TikToks, her children appear again 16 times for again an average of 80% of the time in which her children are appearing in her TikToks. Cole has 22 million followers on TikTok and in the past 20 posts, the children appear in 15 posts, so approximately 75% of posts. Going on to YouTube, of the past 20 thumbnails, the children appeared in 16 thumbnails, so again 80% percent of the thumbnails that the LeBrant family posts heavily features their children. When analyzing how much the children appear in the vlog content itself, I decided to only examine two random videos to analyze how much of the video itself features the kids, which I know isn't super accurate on average, so hopefully it's at least good enough where we can get a good picture of how often children are working or providing work in these vlogs. And to make it more fair, I won't count when children are just in the background of the video. In the video, Everly and Posey record Savannah emotional, which features the children's names in the title right off the bat. Out of the 10 minutes and 27 seconds of the video, the children are not featured in only 1 minute and 10 seconds, so at least 90% of this vlog features their children. The last video I analyzed was their most recent video at the time of recording, titled my wife and kids reaction to cutting all of Zeeland's hair off, with the child's name in the title again. Out of 8 minutes and 7 seconds, the children are not appearing in the video or at the center point of the video for only about 40 seconds, to maybe a minute max if you count the beginning screen and end screen. So about 90% of this video, again, features the children, I think. I don't know. I can't do math, but you get the picture. So on average, the children are in about 80% of the content that Savannah and Cole post across all social media platforms. Their children have as much of a career as Savannah and Cole do, and work almost as much as Savannah and Cole do towards producing content. What will the children think about this when they get older? How will they feel? Will they feel like their childhood and privacy was robbed from them? Will they reap the benefits of the career they greatly helped make for their parents? And you, watching right now, would you do this to your children? Would you ever make the choice to do this for the opportunity of millions? A life-changing amount of money a comfy life for your children so long as they produce consistent content for you and share their lives with millions. controversy ensued once more on April 9th of 2022 after the LeBrant family uploaded what they described as a documentary about abortion, which was titled Abortion documentary in parentheses. The couple said they wanted to spread the message of being pro-love rather than pro-choice or pro-life. Instead of pro-life or pro-choice, is it possible for us to be pro-love? But viewers criticized the couple, saying that they were pretty much spreading propaganda. Um, but yeah, the fact that all this is disgusting um, and manipulative and gross, Cole said and in the documentary- 
There's no science no. in it. No. Continue. Yep, yep, yep. The video started with Savannah describing her experience of becoming pregnant at 19, saying that choosing to continue the pregnancy was worth it. Well, yeah, because your daughter ended up making millions for you through you filming and posting her dancing online and going to a water park. Sorry. They later, in the documentary, referred to a as more deadly than heart disease and as the leading cause of death in the United States, saying that more than 2,000 abortions happen in the country every day. And the documentary did not cite a source for this statistic. On top of that, about one minute into the video, it shows a slideshow of the death counts from various gen sides throughout history, such as the 1994 Rwandan and the 1975 to 1979 Cambodian genocide. It then showed the death toll from the Holocaust, believed to total around 11 million people, according to History.com, followed by a counter titled Abortion in the US, which appeared to show that there had been upwards of 61 million abortions in the US. The video didn't state a period of time in which these abortions occurred or a source for where the Lebrance pulled the data from. The comment section has been disabled, but on Twitter, many people criticized the video, especially for its comparison to the Holocaust. On top of that, a purported tweet from 2018 from Cole also resurfaced on Twitter. While the tweets have been deleted, a screenshot of the message shows Cole saying he would strongly encourage his daughter to have the baby if she were to become pregnant as a result of our word. In response to the scrutiny, Savannah spoke on Twitter, insisting that they didn't mean it in a hurtful way. We didn't mean it in a hurtful way or anything. I do understand nothing should be compared to something like the Holocaust, she wrote. I didn't go through to edit the video. Cole edits most of our videos that are uploaded. I do apologize for any hurtful things the video has done. The uploading of this video was to show how we plan to help anyone going through something or thinking of an abortion and to show our view, she added. I do totally agree with you on it being presented in another way. As a mom, I'm still learning from things, and I do hope to learn from this on future documentaries we do. The Lebrands have continually pled naivety to criticism, but when you're a parent and a major influencer, Naivety only goes so far. Of course, everyone's naive and ignorant to something. We all have biases. But as a major YouTuber and huge family channel, I do believe the LeBrants have a responsibility in the way they carry their message. Maybe that's just me though. But regardless of the LeBrant's many controversies, they have built a successful and massive social media brand, utilizing themselves and their children. According to Nailbuzz, Everly, the oldest daughter's current net worth is around 1 million, and Everly's siblings are not far behind. Brands also line up to collaborate with the LeBrant family for the massive exposure they guarantee and this wholesome family branding image. According to The List, these vloggers make about $5.5 million a year just from ads that run on their channel, and they gain more followers every day. Some people think it's awesome that Cole and Savannah have already set up their children for a life where they'll be famous, rich, and successful, and other Others are really concerned about the long-term effects on the children. And unfortunately, this is a situation where only time will tell the real ramifications of being a child forced into the spotlight and having to vlog the everyday life of your childhood. Nothing is always what it appears to be. There is no perfect family and there are no perfect parents. Family vloggers have created a new era of illusions online, pretending that the perfect parents and perfect childhood exists, but behind it all is a dark underbelly of facades and potential exploitation 
of their own children. I'm no expert on childhood. Though I have a child myself and as a parent have my own opinions, I can't say what the perfect childhood is or what the best way to raise a child is. But I do think that more awareness is absolutely needed on this topic. And there have been some great pages like Mom Uncharted on TikTok and the Dad Challenge podcast here on YouTube who have been talking about this issue for quite some time and doing a great job at spreading awareness. But it's time. It's time for us all to step up and speak out about this potentially exploitative and harmful situation that family channels are putting their children in. 